Hi, everybody. Um, let's see. I want to start here about showing you a little bit of the variety of what a companion rabbit uh, is like in the household. Who should adopt a rabbit? And who should not adopt a rabbit? And which type of rabbit? So as you can see from this slide, there's a whole variety of people here. There's families, there's men, there's women, there's children. And basically it's all about finding the right connection between the rabbit and the human. That's really what it's all about. And let me move along. Lisa. Oh, okay. No. All right. So who are we? Uh, Mickey uh, told you a little bit about who we are. And here are some of the bunnies that we've rescued. The bunny in the center is um, a lab rabbit. And we've been fortunate to work with the Beagle Freedom Project to legally rescue these rabbits out of laboratories. They've been uh, medically tested on, but they are now made available for adoption. And e they are usually the absolute nicest rabbits. They're bred to be extremely docile so that people can handle them. And then they come here for adoption and um, people just fall in love with them. And you can see that's his, been this bunny's whole life until he came here. That's the cage, there's no toys. Um, and that's actually a bigger cage than usual for laboratory testing. We get the floppy ear bunnies, we get underage babies, we get your mixed breeds, we get purebreds, we get every type of bunny. Um, and we encourage you to uh, meet them by personality and not by their looks. Space. Okay. So this is a little bit of what we've talked about already is that we've been in doing this for over 21 years. And at this point, we've rescued about 5,000 rabbits or been involved in the rescues of 5,000 rabbits and 35 shelters plus. Okay. So you can see we also get special needs rabbits in. That's actually our expertise. We work a lot with traumatized, abused, and neglected rabbits. And we find that most of them make the choice to trust people again, and they become the most loving bunnies because they, they've been through the worst and they've forgiven people and they are eager to uh, give back the love that you give to them. So what are companion rabbits? We consider companion rabbits a member of the family, just like a cat or a dog. They're as smart as cats and dogs, actually. They learn to use a litter box when they're spayed and neutered. They learn their names. They can be clicker trained. And just like humans, they each have a unique personality and no two of them are the same, even if they're siblings and look exactly alike. And it's all about the chemistry that they feel with you and you feel with them. They will bond for life with their humans as well as with their, their mates. They are not rodents. This is a big misconception that most people have. Even the airlines list them as rodents, but they're not, they're lagomorphs. And they are not nocturnal. They're what's called crepuscular, which is a lot like a deer. And they're active in the morning and the evening and so if you are uh, not an early riser, then do not have the bunny in your room because about 4.30 to five o'clock in the morning, they want you up to feed them and to play. So that's something to keep in mind when you bring a bunny home. What's really important to remember is that rabbits are prey animals. If there's nothing else that you get out of this presentation, and I hope you'll get more out of it than this, but rabbits are prey. And you can see because their eyes are on the side of their head so that they can see peripherally and behind them. They're cautious about new and different environments. So it can take them some time to warm up in a new environment. They are hardwired to escape and run, the fight and flight. And they're more similar to horses and deer than they are to cats and dogs. You are a predator. And um, uh, hold on one second, Lisa, how do I make sure that I can see that? Mm -hmm. Sorry, we're just having a little technical issue. But, um, okay, thank you. All right, good, good. 
All right, perfect. Thank you. So people are predators and um, your eyes are forward. For example, I'm vegan, but I'm still a predator to an animal. My eyes are forward and children are little predators with little claws. So they, um, they can scare rabbits with their enthusiasm and uh, cats and dogs are predators. Now you can have a multi-species household. You just have to make sure that the bunny's safety is always the priority. And a lot of the times rabbits end up being the boss, but uh, it's always about the rabbit's safety. Something to keep in mind when adopting a rabbit or fostering a rabbit is that they are fragile. They have fragile digestive systems. They can't vomit. So for example, they groom themselves a lot and they swallow fur. If, if that gets stuck in their intestines, they can die from that. And the, all of that furball medicine for cats, it just doesn't work on rabbits. Their teeth grow their entire life. So their diet uh, is mostly hay and we'll get into that. Um, and I think Ann Martin already covered a lot of that, but their teeth, especially the boutique bunnies, the small bunnies, the lops and the Netherlands dwarfs, they have to be genetically engineered to have a face that looks like this adorable little gray bunny. They have to make the skull uh, more compact. And what that does is it smushes the teeth in. So they still have the same number of teeth as other rabbits, but the shape of the skull has been changed abnormally. And so they often have ear problems and dental problems. If you think about a pug dog, lock bunnies are often the same as that. You want to make sure that you always supervise children around rabbits and you learn to respect your rabbit's boundaries. If they say, don't pick me up, then please don't pick them up. The more that you respect and listen to them, the more that they will bond and engage with you. They also carry a grudge. So you definitely want to be listening to your bunny. Lisa. Oh, sorry. Just okay. click on, on the list there. Okay. Okay. All right. So is a companion rabbit right for you? Um, we are looking always for indoor homes only. An adult must be the caregiver, no matter how much your child promises to do all the work. He or she will not do it, maybe for a week or so, but they will get bored of doing the cleaning and rabbits need to be have their areas cleaned every single day. Rabbits can also live to be more than 10 years old when done correctly. So when you get the right diet and you house them indoors, they're spayed and neutered, they see the vet regularly, you're looking at a long-term commitment, which is really wonderful. One of our volunteers has a 16-year-old rabbit and I have uh, had several 14-year-old rabbits, including some that are still here as my uh, sanctuary bunnies. You also have to be ready to spend a lot of money uh, when you have a bunny. The vet care can be extremely expensive. Um, can you help me time it? Uh, and you, uh, I'll go into some of the costs, but rabbit-centric behavior is also super important. You'll see this beautiful little duchy bunny on the right saying, whoa, don't touch me. And rabbits have their own opinions. Um, they're not these docile, dumb little animals that are waiting to be picked up and cuddled like a stuffed animal. So having a bunny in your house means that you understand rabbit language and that you are okay with that. And so sometimes small children, they're not a good fit for small children because rabbits don't wanna be picked up and held, even if they are hand raised as babies. So here's some approximate costs for a bunny. If you're adopting and the setup, it's usually between three to $400 to get the right supplies, an X-Pen, the hay holders, the, the adoption fees. And this is what it costs pretty much through us. It might be a little bit less through a shelter. The adoption fee would be less, but the setup costs are gonna be uh, one of your biggest expenses to do it right. If you're thinking of saving money by getting a quote unquote free rabbit, you're gonna need to spay or neuter that bunny um, because they have an 80 to 90% chance of getting cancer by the time they are three or four. 
and a private spay or neuter can run between $400 and $650 to do. So your free rabbit ends up costing more than a rabbits you adopt through a shelter or a rescue. And your yearly food supplies and wellness bunny visits run between $600 and $800. That's just when they're younger. After bunnies are six years old, you would, it's recommended that you see a vet for a wellness check every six months. As mentioned earlier, their teeth grow through their entire lifetime. And what will happen is that the back teeth, this is just like a horse. So people who are familiar with horses will understand that the molars need to be filed down as these uh, animals get older. And what keeps their teeth healthy is the hay. It's not uh, wood blocks. It's not chewed toys. It is the long strands of hay and long stems of vegetables. So the bunnies will pull the, the long strands in through the front and the front teeth work like this and the back teeth grind. Um, and uh, can you just check that I can't see myself yes. on there? All right, sorry about that. Uh, technical difficulties here. Great with bunnies, technical not so much. And uh, so I wanna make sure that my hands are up here, you know, <laughs> showing you what bunnies actually do. So the front teeth do this and the back teeth grind. That's how the teeth stay healthy. So the long strands of veggies come in, the long strands of hay, we're not talking about hay cubes. Also, you want to always have a plan in mind for when you're traveling. You wanna be able to afford boarding and rabbits should not be left alone with just food and water. They are prey animals that hide their illnesses until the last minute. I lost my first rescue to a pet sitter that did not follow very specific written instructions. And I came home and uh, lost the rabbit on the way to the vet. She passed away and the pet sitter said, well, I thought she just missed you. And that was someone who had very specific instructions. So I know that uh, House Rabbit Society does boarding, we do boarding, there's other, uh, exper Bunny Hayloft does boarding. You want to make sure that you don't just leave a bunny in care in the care of a friend that has no knowledge about bunny uh, health. And boarding when you're traveling can cost anywhere between $25 to $75 a day. If your bunny needs medication, it can run higher than that. And you'll want to plan, especially for the holiday time, to reserve boarding, at least here, at least four to five months in advance. Lastly, emergency vet treatments and care will run between $500 to $1,500 per day, depending on what is going on. You're going to need to do blood work. You're going to need to have x-rays. You might have to hospitalize your bunny. The bottom line here is that rabbits are not low maintenance, and they're not inexpensive, and they're not starter pets. Sorry. Okay. Okay, so what type of rabbit is best? Male or female? Lops, pure breeds, mixed breeds, older, young, old, large, small, single or bonded pair? And the, the answer is it really just depends on the situation. Here's some considerations. Who actually wants this rabbit? Is it you as an adult or is it your child? Uh, are you thinking of getting a gift for somebody, gifting them a rabbit, which we recommend you absolutely do not do because again, you saw the expenses that are involved. And part of the joy of living with a rabbit is having the connection and finding the rabbit that's the best fit for you. They pick you just as much as you pick them. So that goes to point number two is, does the rabbit like you? When people come here to meet their meet bunny friends, we watch carefully to see if the bunny likes you because they interact differently with different people. And if the bunny doesn't like the human, we won't adopt out because it's not the right fit. And ultimately the goal is to have a real love connection with your bunny. Again, spaying and neutering, you must get a spader neutered, your rabbit spader neutered because of the cancer risk. And one of the biggest misperceptions out there 
is that baby bunnies are better, that they are hand raised and that they're nicer and they've never been traumatized. And that is absolutely not true. You cannot train them to like to be held. You might be able to train them to tolerate it, but it's tolerating something they don't like and you're forcing something on them, which is not the whole point of bringing in a new family member. So that whole myth about baby bunnies is a myth. Some of the nicest, gentlest, most loving bunnies we've ever had are some of the older ones, especially those who have had a really rough life. And they have come through it with, and I know this might sound silly to some people, but they're super grateful. They know they're in a good place and they choose to be with you. Uh, and to me, that's an incredible gift um, that they allow us to be with them. Lastly, do you have an open heart and an open mind? Because the ruby eyed white bunnies are usually by far the nicest bunnies. They are also the most frequently euthanized animals at the shelters and people tend to be prejudiced against them and discriminate against them because they don't like the ruby eyes. And what we ask people to do is to base their decisions, of course, on the personality. Also, if, if you really want to help a bunny, help a ruby eyed white, but you're going to actually win because they're the nicest ones. They're the ones that, that people um, are at first resistant to, and then they are the biggest advocates. Lastly, if you, if you come here, we will ask you to sit with a ruby eyed bunny and count the number of colors that you see in their eyes because they are not red eyed bunnies. Artistic people in particular will notice that they are lavender. Uh, they have lavender colors, light blue, ruby, pink, sky blue. They're beautiful multicolored eyes. And so keep that in mind when you're, you're looking uh, for a bunny. They're, they're just very special and it breaks our hearts that there's so many that can't find homes because people discriminate against them. Okay, here's the proper housing. Indoors, it's cleaner and it's safer. You probably have heard what you did here earlier today about the RHDB2 virus, and that is outside. Um, and so when you have them indoors, you don't, you, they're not exposed to parasites or fleas or uh, predators. Uh, even if you think your yard is well contained or you have a hutch that nobody can get out of or into, that rabbit is exposed outside to uh, all kinds of smells and sounds and it's lonely for a bunny outside. They're very social. So putting them outside is an old fashioned farm mentality that's from 20, 25 years ago. You're gonna have a bunny that loves you much more and you will have a cleaner and safer rabbit by having him or her live inside with you. Your pen should be at least 12 to 16 feet. And uh, you want to bunny proof wires and plants in your house, meaning they should, bunnies should not be able to get to them. You won't be able to run over and catch the bunny fast enough. And they, as mentioned earlier, they can't vomit. They also are so domesticated that they don't know what's poisonous and what's not. So people have lost their bunnies by having the bunny drink the water from a Christmas tree eat plants in their house that are toxic, chew on candles. There's all kinds of things that bunnies will get themselves into. It's like having a perpetual toddler in your house. Uh, they're gonna be like that forever. They explore with their mouths. So you have to protect them. You wanna have safe floor covering. If you have hardwood floors, the bunny actually, do, the bunnies do better with traction and you would, uh, uh, rabbit urine, if it happens to get on your hardwood floors, is not good, and it's hard to get out. Um, so having, we recommend uh, bunny safe carpeting or linoleum. We put down sheets here and let the bunnies run on the sheets. You want to have them out of a pen exercising for at least five hours a day. Even if they're sitting there chilling with you by the TV, they should not be sitting in their pen most of the time. That is not the way to have a bunny become a part of your family. 
You also want to make sure that you have adequate litter boxes using the correct litter. So good litters include recycled paper, paper-based litter, cat country pelleted litter, um, sometimes hay over newspaper, but I really prefer using um, something like cat country or the paper litter. The bad things, bad things can be available at the store and you'll see packages that have pictures of happy smiling bunnies and it'll say your bunny will love this. It's uh, just marketing. Um, and there's no legislation that they can't sell that stuff, but you never want to get clumping litter, sweet corn litter, wheatgrass litter, wheat litter, pine or cedar shavings. All of that is toxic for rabbits. So stick with the ones that we recommend and you'll be much safer. There's just a lot of garbage out there and uh, it makes it difficult, especially for new people to understand what's safe and what's not. Our website has a whole uh, page on uh, PDF on rabbit care. Here's an X pen. This is what you want for a bunny. The ones that are open on the top, typically they can jump these as well. And so a minimum of 30 inches high. You don't want these little plastic cages and what you'll see at Petco and uh, Pet Food Express and some of these other big box stores is that they say that this is a luxury cage and they have a little plastic shelf in there. And that's small even for a guinea pig. But rabbits, putting a rabbit in a plastic cage like this is, is, is just wrong. I mean, I don't know, I don't wanna say cruel, but it is completely inappropriate for a rabbit's physical uh, structure as well as their need for exercise and activity. So these pens, these exercise pens uh, on the left are, uh, is it there right? No, <laughs> Whatever, it's, the, it's exercise, it. the exercise pen over here allows you to reach in and pet the bunny. You can open the door, you can walk in there to pick up the bunny rather than pulling them out of the cage. They really don't like to be pulled out of their safe space and it'll make it much more difficult to handle a rabbit if you're using a cage. Here's a sample setup. And this bunny lives in this person's uh, kitchen and living room. So you can see there's lots of toys, the boxes and the tubes and the chew toys and the X-Pen is open while the bunny is running around and the pen blocks off the part of her house that she does not want the bunny to go into. Here's another setup. Lots of toys. You can see the bunny is out hanging around with bunnies or out hanging around with their humans. Here's some nice toys that you can use. There's all kinds of good stores. There's Binky Bunny, uh, there's Busy Bunny, there's the Cottontail Cottage, the um, boxes from Costco, especially the juice area. They're, you're gonna have to fight us for them because they're really, really good boxes. You want things that are bunny safe to chew. And you wanna stick with places that are, that are known for selling rabbit toys. Don't go to someplace like Cost Plus um, or Pier One or whatever and, and see things that look like willow and they might've been sprayed uh, and they're just not safe. So stick, we, are, we have resources for you on our site and so does rabbit.org. Here's more boxes. You, you know what's fun for people is that they often create a fort for their bunny and they create a maze and the bunny can go, uh, you change it up. Rabbits like a bit of a challenge. You can hide their food. You can just keep them busy. Rabbits like to be busy and they like a project and better they use the boxes as a project than they use uh, your, um, uh, your furniture excuse me, as a project. All right, here's more toys. The good old yellow pages. Take off the slippery covers and the bunnies will shred and enjoy the yellow pages. So whenever I see them in the post office, I always um, snag them. Uh, just take off the slippery covers. And again, you'll see some toys, even a toilet, um, toilet paper roll stuffed with hay. You can put the bags, um, sorry, just trying to move new bunnies into the other room. 
Uh, you can stuff a paper bag with hay and with treats, tie it at the top with some raffia, let the bunny rip it apart, let them forage for their food, um, which is something that bunnies, uh, bunnies like to do. They, they need a project. Here's the diet. I know that you've heard about it already, but 80% of the diet is good grass hay. It's like Timothy hay, orchard grass, oat hay, and again, the long strands and not the cubes. Alfalfa is for babies and for bunnies who are sick. It is not for adults. It, it has too much calcium and it's too rich. So you want to stick with these grass hays. And with oat hay, they have a tendency, rabbits have a tendency to eat the oats off the top. So we use oat hay as a treat only. You'll see this bunny's teeth. This is Greyjoy, who is who you met earlier, who is our sanctuary bunny. This is what his teeth look like when he first came in. And you can see that he obviously couldn't eat. He couldn't groom himself. This is a malocclusion. And this is from breeding. When they breed bunnies to have that floppy, the floppy ears and the smushed in face, this is what can happen with the teeth. So this bunny would have been euthanized if we had not taken him. The expense of these teeth over time costs us a, close to, and the ear infections, probably about $4,000. So that's what you get when you get a bunny that's got some, some serious health issues. Here's some good veggie ideas. Again, this is on our site. Veggies are about 15% of the diet. You want to do dark leafy greens. And we start, we stay with a couple of ones that we know are safe because some, some greens have too much uh, calcium or oxalates in them. Cilantro is great. Uh, parsley's, mint, the carrot tops, not the carrots because the carrots are sugar. And uh, one carrot for a bunny is like giving them 10 or 15 chocolate bars. Fennel is good, the, the tops of fennel, basil, dill, wheatgrass, and bok choy. Give a variety of about three types a day. And uh, like if you went to a nice restaurant and you got a salad, that's about how much for an average four to five pound bunny. The pellets are 5% of the diet. They are mostly just for a little bit extra vitamins. And what we do is we do greens one time of the day and we do pellets the other time of the day. Those are treat foods. Our vet explained to us that any food that we humans can chew and digest is a treat for a rabbit. So we can chew and digest the veggies, the pellets, the treat foods, but we will sit and chew hay all day long and never be able to digest it. So hay is really what is the most important part of a rabbit's diet. People tend to think it's reverse. They think that the pellets are important, but keep in mind that they're processed. And the further away from the natural food, the less healthy it is. If you are gonna give treats, we typically give treats to hide medicine. That's what we do. Uh, we consider the greens a treat and we consider the pellets a treat. So we'll do say veggies in the morning, pellets at night, if they turn down either one of those treat foods, we know the rabbit is sick. And by the time rabbits start to show, ish, uh, show symptoms, you're already uh, needing to go to the vet. So here are some little bits of treats. The main thing is bunnies have a sweet tooth and they're super adorable when they beg and it's really hard to resist them. But you love can kill a bunny by overfeeding. Obesity, heart disease, um, arthritis and uh, sugar overload can all be really, really bad for a bunny. So basic health care includes finding a bunny savvy vet, a yearly well bunny visit, uh, the RHD, uh, RHDV virus uh, shots, and dental care, as we talked about. And we also talk some about digestive problems. Uh, a lot of times people talk about something called stasis. Stasis is just a symptom. It's not a disease itself. So uh, digestive problems are one of the main ways that people lose their rabbits because rabbits are fragile. And finding this is Dr. Harvey, who is one of the, one of the best vets around there. We're lucky in the Bay Area to have several really, really good rabbit vets. 
including Dr. Lumen, Dr. Skeenstra, Dr. Stern. So there's there's a lot of good money that's out there. Um, those are the ones that I happen to know. All right. All right. So grooming, you um, you want to be brushing your bunny at least once a week. And if they are long hair bunny, more than that, nail trims every four to six weeks. We clean the anal glands of a bunny. It sounds grosser than it is. Uh, it's not like dog uh, anal glands. And um, uh, so don't be put off by that. It just keeps them clean and then helps them smell a little bit better. And all of those papaya tablets, the laxatone, pineapple juice, and things like that, that's a myth. That's just, that's just old wives tales that don't work. And so don't, don't rely on those. Grooming and hay is the most important thing. Okay, here's a video of, of me picking up a rabbit. And rabbits, if you drop them, you can break their backs and break their legs. And even I have done that. And I know of a lot of people who are experienced who have done that when they are rushing to catch the rabbit to go to the vet or the rabbit squirms and, and gets dropped. It happened to me about 15 years ago when I was in a hurry to pick up a rabbit and I will never, ever, ever do that again. And so um, I wanna make sure everybody understands the importance of being able to handle your rabbit. You need to be able to handle your rabbit to get the bunny to the vet if there's a fire and kids should not be walking around and holding a bunny. Bunnies don't like it, and it's also dangerous if they get dropped. So um, can I play this video? I think so. We're going to try to play this try. video. Oops. Go back. We're going to go back. OK, so let's see. All right. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So here's one way that we feel is one of the safest ways to pick up a rabbit. If you are right-handed, you want the bunny to be on your right side. And you want to make sure you have plenty of time to do this so you're not rushing to get the bunny onto that side. I lean over the rabbit. I put my right hand under her chest, under her bunny elbows. And I immediately scoop her up so that her hips are on my hip. And then I would hold her on her hip area to keep her tight next to me. If I, I never loosen the grip right here. It's as if glass to glass. To put her down, I want to keep her close to me, cover her eyes, bend down, and keep her close to me until I place her on the ground. So the reason I cover a bunny's eyes is that they are less likely to jump out of your arms if they can't see where they're going. And people have a tendency to do, you know, horror, horror picture uh, uh, hands over the eyes. You want to actually cover the eyes. And the main thing is you want to keep the bunny tightly next to you. And no matter what happens, don't drop the rabbit. You want to stay calm, gently get yourself uh, down to the ground and let the rabbit be released. All right, that's the end. And we have a resource guide for you. And uh, I'm here to answer any questions anybody might have or go back through any information that you want more information about.